There's a lot of milestones your baby will hit in the first year. Walking and talking are, of course, the big ones, but there's a number of emotional milestones that will affect your baby's ability to learn over the course of his or her lifetime. February's issue of American Baby Magazine has some advice on how parents can make sure their baby gets a solid start in life. And for more now, we're joined by Kate Kelly, Managing Editor for American Baby. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a lot of um, new moms wonder when they hear the baby crying, how quickly should they get to the baby um, so they don't emotionally scar the baby that they're leaving them too long, but they don't coddle them and create problems down the road. Um, yeah, when it comes to babies, little babies, you never have to worry about spoiling your baby. You should go as quickly as you can and respond to his cries. If he's hungry, feed him. If he just wants to be held, hold him. And that's how he learns to build trust. And, and over time, he learns that he can handle a little bit of stress because somebody always comes to help. And that helps him develop. Uh, oddly enough, the quicker you respond, the, be the more self-reliant he'll become. How do you teach children cause and effect so they know when one thing happens, something else is sure to follow? Well, you don't really have to teach that because they're going to learn that all by themselves. They're going to do stuff like drop things over and over again from their high chair. The peas, oh, what kind of sound does a pea make versus a spoon? If I drop it 20 times, is it going to make that exact same noise every time? Not is, annoying at all. You know, <laughs> is mom eventually going to yell or what's going to happen? You know, they're, they're testing things on so many different levels, and, but, and it seems annoying, but that's really how they learn, by just doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, any toys that one well, should focus on? Um, Toys that stimulate the senses are good, like a whole variety of different kinds of toys, like visual toys. Um, they like, you know, black and white gets a lot of hype because of the contrast. That's how they see best. But they also, in the beginning, like really vibrant colors, activity mats, um, mobiles, stuff like that to stimulate their sight. And then touch toys, you know, that have different textures or soft blocks. And then they like, um, the, uh, noise toys, you know, chime rattles and, you know, just things they can shake. Um, toys as they get older that allow them to mimic you because kids love to do what you're doing, like little lawn mowers and brooms Cute. and stuff like that. If only they would do it when they're older, but when they're two, they really want to clean. Um, and, you know, it doesn't even always have to be a toy. It could just be like a spoon or a pot or something like that. Just different things. They do like novelty. They like to have a lot of different stuff. Yeah, so how often should you follow their lead when they get tired of something yeah, and buy they, some, yeah, something new? Yeah, just get or? something newer. Oh, some people rotate. They have stuff out and then because it's overwhelming having too many toys at once. You can't really see what you have so that you might put things in shifts. Okay. So they always seem new. All right. Kate Kelly, thank you so much for the thank advice. Thank you. That's great.